Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Something that I've heard a lot of this year is how bad the state of PC gaming is right now. How there's a lack of development and progress on the hardware front and we're just getting absolutely steamrolled on pricing. Now, to a certain degree, I kind of get it. High-end products these days are certainly very pricey and those big performance gains that we used to see are becoming harder and harder to come by. But are things really that bad? Personally, I don't think they're that bad at all. In fact, I feel in a lot of ways, they're as good as they've ever been. But before we get too far into that, today's video is sponsored by PC Case Gear, Australia's premier online PC store. Whenever I'm in the need for a product, they're the first place I turn to, and I've been a customer of theirs for years now. So I really can attest to the quality of their service. I value their broad product range, competitive pricing, customer support, and easy to navigate website. With two decades of experience, I know I can trust PC Case Gear to look after you guys as well as they look after me. So for more information, please check the link in the video description. Okay, so today, for example, you can buy a powerful modern six core 12 thread CPU like the Ryzen 5 3600 for just $195 US. And that is of course, brand spanking new. Three years ago, you'd be looking at paying about three times that amount for something like the Core i7-6850K or at least twice as much for the 6800K. And then today we also have other cheaper six core 12 thread options like the previous generation Ryzen 5 2600 they're selling for a little over $100 US new. So at least on the CPU front, things have been, well, things have never been better. Memory and storage pricing is also amazing right now, but what about graphics cards? I think it's probably graphics cards that most gamers are focusing on when they complain about the current state of the PC gaming industry. Three years ago now, well, almost three and a half years ago now, NVIDIA released its Pascal architecture with the GeForce 10 series, and what an amazingly good series it was. Starting with the GeForce GTX 1080 in late May 2016, NVIDIA wowed gamers with never-before-seen performance at the $600 US price point. Then a month later, the GTX 1070 did much the same when we got the $400 US Founders Edition model, while AIB versions were meant to cost $380 US. But several months after release, they still typically sold for around $400, which was still a great price for that product. And that means today, for roughly the same money, you can purchase either a GeForce RTX 2060 Super or a Radeon 5700 XT. So what kind of performance improvement should you be looking at for things not to be as bad as some people say they are? Well, upon release, the GeForce GTX 1070 was around 50 to 60% faster than the GTX 770. And I bring up the GTX 770 because that was released three years prior in 2013 for the same $400 US. Also, please note that I'm basing those performance claims on the 4GB version of the GTX 770 and not the more common 2GB version, which really struggles in any game that's relatively modern. So, if the GeForce RTX 2060 Super or Radeon RX 5700 XT are able to provide around 50-60% to 60 more performance, then things really haven't changed at all. Certainly not for the worse. Even 40 to 50% gains, they should be acceptable in my opinion. And we really do have to recognize at this point that these performance gains are becoming increasingly difficult to unlock. Anyway, in an effort to determine where we stand today, I've taken the GTX 1070, the RTX 2060 Super and the RX 5700 XT and compared them in 37 modern games at 1080p and 1440p. Representing AMD, we have the Power Color Red Devil and representing NVIDIA, we have the MSI RTX 2060 Super Gaming X and the MSI GTX 1070 Gaming X graphics cards. Powering the GPU test rig is the Intel Core i9 9900K, which has been overclocked to 5 gigahertz and features 16 gigabytes of DDR4-3400 memory. As usual, rather than go over all 37 graphs here, which would take quite a long time, we're just gonna look at about a dozen of them closely and then jump into the performance breakdown graphs. And for the discussion, I will be focusing on the 1440p results. Finally, for those of you interested in any of the graphs that weren't shown in this video, all 37 of them can be found on our Patreon page for free. So yeah, the link will be in the video description. Check that out if you're interested. Anyway, let's get into the gaming benchmarks. First up, we have Red Dead Redemption 2. And here the 2060 Super provided a very solid 53% performance boost over the GTX 1070, 
while the 5700 XT was a whopping 85% faster. Now, this is a brand new title, and there is a good chance Nvidia is yet to optimize for Pascal. Obviously, optimizing for Turing-based GPUs will be their priority right now, so it is possible the margin will close up a little bit. Moving on, we have Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and this is another demanding title, but this one's been out in the wild for a year now, and here we see the 2060 Super offering a 62% performance increase over the 1070, while the 5700 XT was 67% faster at 1440p. So obviously some very significant performance gains there for the more modern GPUs. Interestingly though, we see very little difference between the GeForce GPUs in the new Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order title. Here the 2060 Super was just 18% faster, while the 5700 XT offered a 26% performance bump. Though I should note this is actually the best result for the GTX 1070 in all of the 37 games tested. Here we see that the 2060 Super provides a 30% performance boost in the Outer Worlds, while the 5700 XT was just 22% faster at 1440p. So the old Pascal GPU is still quite impressive in this title. Here we see the Radeon RX 5700 XT is a beast in Call of Duty Modern Warfare, beating the RTX 2060 Super by a 26% margin at 1440p, and that meant it was 66% faster than the GTX 1070. Meanwhile, the 2060 Super was also 31% faster than the GTX 1070, which isn't too bad. Here we see that the GTX 1070 really struggles in the control at 1440p, and this allowed the 2060 Super to offer 59% more frames, and then 65% more for the 5700 XT. So those are some pretty massive performance gains for the current generation $400 GPUs. World War Z plays nicely on the GeForce GTX 1070, even at 1440p. Here it maintained over 60 FPS at all times. Despite that though, the 2060 Super was still able to deliver 32% more performance, and we see that the 5700 XT delivered a massive 64% performance boost. So again, some strong gains to be had here with the newer GPUs. Testing with F1 2019 sees the 2060 Super boost performance by 40% over the GTX 1070, while the 5700 XT was 60% faster at 1440p. The 2060 Super wasn't a great deal faster than the GTX 1070 when testing with Ghost Recon Breakpoint. Well, at least not compared to some of the other titles that we've already looked at. Here it was 26% faster, which is a little surprising given the 5700 XT was a massive 58% faster when comparing the average frame rates. Moving on, we see that the GTX 1070 proves that it's more than capable in Fortnite. Probably not a big surprise there as Fortnite's not exactly the most demanding game out there, but even so you can still expect 30% more frames with the 2060 Super and 28% more with the 5700 XT. So those are some decent performance gains. Surprisingly, we see just a 20% performance boost for the 2060 Super over the 1070 when testing with Gears 5. That said, the 5700 XT did beat the 1070 by a rather convincing 38% margin at 1440p and 54% at 1080p. This time when testing with Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we see that the 2060 Super is 42% faster than the GTX 1070, while the 5700 XT is 50% faster. The difference in performance is also very noticeable at 1440p, going from dips into the 40s to high 50s to mid 60s is a very significant and very noticeable difference. The performance gains seen in Apex Legends are also very substantial. Here the 2060 Super was 48% faster than the GTX 1070, while the 5700 XT was 56% faster. And for what it's worth, the gains were also slightly larger at 1080p. The last game we're going to closely look at is Borderlands 3, and here the 2060 Super was 24% faster than the GTX 1070. That said, the 5700 XT was an impressive 55% faster, averaging 65 FPS opposed to just 42 FPS, and again, at 1440p the difference in performance was very noticeable. Okay, so we just checked out how the RTX 2060 Super and RX 5700 XT compare to the GTX 1070 in about a dozen titles. Now it's time to see how they compare across all 37 games tested at 1440p. And remember, for all the graphs, any of the ones that we didn't just look at, you can find them over at our Patreon page for free. This graph shows us how the RTX 2060 Super stacks up against the GTX 1070 in all 37 games. And as you can see, on average, the 2060 Super was 35% faster at 1440p. So 
yeah, that's not amazing progress after three years, but it's not exactly terrible either. We do see 40% gains or better in 10 of the titles tested, but then we do also see 30% or less in 15 of the games tested. So let's see how the Radeon RX 5700 XT stacked up. We already know the 5700 XT is a better value product when compared to the 2060 Super, so it comes as a little surprise that it offers a bigger step forward when compared to the GTX 1070. Here we see that AMD is offering almost 50% more performance at 1440p, and that certainly is a substantial performance improvement. Admittedly, the performance uplift offered by the GeForce RTX 2060 Super, it isn't all that impressive when compared to the almost three and a half year old GTX 1070. Granted, a 35% performance boost on average isn't insignificant, but it's also only about a 10% improvement per year. And as I noted earlier, we really do have to come to terms with the fact that we're not going to get 20 to 30% performance gains year on year anymore. And really, I'm not sure why so many people seem to expect these kinds of gains on a regular basis. I wonder where they were during the five years of 28 nanometer GPUs. It's also worth noting that Nvidia's lacked real competition over the past few years, and naturally that doesn't help with pricing or performance. Back when the GTX 770 was released, AMD already had a strong high-end product in the Radeon HD 7970. And despite the fact that the GTX 770 was released a little over a year after the 7970, it wasn't even 10% faster on average. So this helped keep prices down, and with a healthy amount of competition, we often saw price cuts. Another thing worth considering is VRAM. The GTX 770 typically came configured with just 2GB and only select models carried 4GB. But even then, a 4GB GTX 770 is often at a disadvantage when compared to a GTX 1070, which came exclusively with 8GB. This means comparing them at 1440p will in many cases provide the 1070 with a significant performance advantage, an advantage that's largely attributed to the increased memory capacity and no such performance advantage exists when comparing the 2060 Super and 5700 XT to the GTX 1070, as all three models pack 8GB of VRAM. The newer models do get faster GDDR6 memory, but the point is, the GTX 1070 isn't crippled by limited memory capacity. Had the 1070 only come with 4GB, then you'd see many more instances at 1440p, where the newer GeForce and Radeon GPUs were a lot faster, even over 100% faster. Still, even without the advantage of more VRAM, the 5700 XT was still 48% faster on average when compared to the GTX 1070, and that's certainly a noteworthy performance increase. I also happen to think that it's a very reasonable performance gain after three years. So is PC hardware really that bad in 2019, and are we getting rolled, as some people would put it? Well, let me put it this way. In mid-2016, you could pair a $400 GTX 1070 with a $240 quad-core Core i5-6600K. Today, you can pair an almost 50% faster 5700 XT with a significantly faster $200 6-core 12-thread Ryzen 5 3600, and that seems like pretty good progress to me. Perhaps in a future content piece, I could build both systems and compare them side by side, Though, if you've been keeping tabs on how the 7600K has been getting along in 2019, you'll know that comparison will turn out rather poorly for the system using the quad-core Intel processor. Anyway, in summary, with AMD now competitive at the $400 price point, we have some decent options, and I feel a 48% improvement over the GTX 1070 is a pretty good place to be at. And yeah, Nvidia, they do still have their stupidly expensive 2080 Super and Ti models, but you don't have to buy those, and frankly, unless you're looking at extreme 4K gaming, there really isn't a need to invest in those more elaborate GPUs right now. I'd say it's much like the fact that you don't need to spend $750 on a Ryzen 9 3950X. The 3600 will do just fine, and even last generation's 2600 is still very capable. And that is going to do it for this one. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to do all those YouTube things, you know what they are. Uh, you can also join us over on Patreon if you want to get more involved in the channel and become part of the Harbour Unbox community. You'll get access to our Discord chat, monthly live stream, where you can ask questions directly with Tim and I, and yeah, some other cool perks. Also, you can do some happy unboxing if, if you'd like, and you can also drink your coffee from an official Harbour Unbox mug every morning like I do. Uh, and yeah, but above all else, thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.